Yo, what's going on everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot and we are back for our series where we are covering one player from every single NFL team that is currently being undervalued or underrated in fantasy football drafts. Now we've covered the AFC North and the NFC North, the AFC and NFC South. Today we're talking about the AFC East. That means we've got the Patriots, the Dolphins, the Bills, and of course my New York Jets. Man, it feels good. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We appreciate it. Closing in on 8,000 subscribers, which is absolutely unreal. Football's a couple weeks away, only a little over two weeks away. It is exciting. And as you prepare for your fantasy football drafts, make sure you're checking out these videos and the rest of the videos. We have a fantasy football playlist, which I will link in the description down below. Tons of videos coming your way. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. Let's hop in. And I'm going to start with my New York Jets. You can skip forward if you're, I'm not listening to your New York Jets fan. I don't blame you. I'll have, to, I'll have all the team's timestamp down below. But let's talk with the New York Jets and the player that I think in fantasy football that is currently the most underrated or undervalued, our wide receiver, Corey Davis, currently being drafted as wide receiver 48, pick 123. So right around the 11th, 12th, 13th round where you can get Corey Davis. Now, if you haven't watched any of the Jets in the preseason, for one, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for watching not any preseason football. It's kind of bad, but two, it's the New York Jets. I don't blame you for not watching them. But if you haven't seen it, Zach Wilson, the number two pick in the NFL draft, has looked pretty good. And he's been cooking up nonstop with his wide receiver one, Corey Davis, in two quarters with the Jets so far. He's ran 12 routes, had 10 targets, six receptions, and 88 yards. He's been an absolute beast. And you see Zach Wilson drop back, and he's looking for Corey Davis all time. Now, if you look at it, last year, Corey Davis coming off a top 30 PPR fantasy football wide receiver. That was on the Tennessee Titans, a team that threw, I believe, the, worst, the least amount of times in the NFL, and he wasn't even the number one guy. as had A.J. Brown down there. Now, if you look at it this season, the Jets are going to be throwing the ball a lot, a lot more than people, I think, would anticipate. Now, if you think about the Jets, you're like, oh, this, this team is very unfantasy friendly. This is fantasy disgusting and I don't I don't necessarily think you I can't disagree with that because the Jets haven't been good in recent years especially for fantasy football sake but they've had a ton of injuries on the opposite side of the ball on the defensive side just over the past week they've lost several key starters so I do not expect the defense to be very good and I think the offense will be surprisingly pretty good and pretty efficient while they will probably lose a lot of games I think Zach Wilson and company will take risks and he'll be laying it out there for Corey Davis to go score some points now you talk about Davis last year Put up very good numbers and potentially almost his first 1,000-yard season until he barely got injured at the end and missed two games in there and finished 16 yards shy of his first ever 1,000-yard season. I think this year he could be in line for 1,000 receiving yards. Now you look at it, Zach Wilson's going to be targeting him. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot. And all things considered, not only is Corey Davis underrated and undervalued in fantasy football, you will see him probably if they disrespect him in my first week's edition of NFL player props that we'll be betting on. I'll be taking his over in receptions because I do believe this guy will have a huge target share and he's the number one wide out. All, a lot of the wide receivers for my New York Jets are getting injured. So yeah, it might just be Corey Davis out there and he'll be piling up the stats, especially in PPR leagues. He's going to see a lot of targets and he will have a good fantasy football year. And like I said, he's being drafted as wide receiver 48. I guarantee you, unless he gets injured or something happens, he'll be better than, there will not be 47 better wide receivers in fantasy football. Wouldn't even surprise me to see him creep up the draft boards as people, you know, watch the preseason, see how good he's been and how, you know, frequent they're targeting him. Would not surprise me one bit. Going on to our next team in the division, our rival, the New England Patriots. And now while I would love I love a repeat season of last year with the Patriots. We're not very good. That'll be good this year. That's just how it is. And, you know, whether or not, you know, they're, they're getting a lot of defensive starters back, which will be very important. But also, Cam Newton can't possibly be worse than he was last year. Cam Newton did not look himself in his first year in the Patriots offense with Josh McDaniels. But this year, he will be better. And if he doesn't, well, Mac Jones is coming right on in, who has looked very good in the preseason. Now, the player I'm going to go most underrated on this team, because I don't really want to pick Cam Newton or Mac Jones. I don't really know who's going to be starting. I mean, I do expect Cam Newton for majority of the season, but you never know, so it's kind of hard to predict that. Damian Harris is going where I think he should go. I mean, he's not, he doesn't have any receiving volume, and the receivers aren't that, you know, I mean, the Kendrick Warren's a legend, but that's about all they got. Now, I'm going to go with their tight end, John U. Smith. It's currently being drafted as tight end 13, ADP pick 133. So around the 13th, 14th round. Now, John New, he finds himself in the court, the tight end carousel, if you will, the the where you look at it every, if you're, if maybe you have a Travis Kelsey, a Darren Waller, or one of the top guys on by, you look at the waiver wire and you're like, um, no, I'm just throwing a dart basically. Cause that's how, that's how un, unlikely it is with all these guys. And that's where John is going in that tight end 13 range with the Mike Kosicki's of the world, the Rob Gronkowski's, those very touchdown dependent tight ends. 
And while I'm not saying Johnny Smith will be a top five tight end this year, I do think he is being underrated. Now, I don't think there will be 12 tight ends better than him at the end of the year. You look at it, the Patriots gave him four years, $50 million. Adam Schefter always says, follow the money, and I think they will be using him a lot. Now, I understand what you're saying. You got Hunter Henry there. Also, they give a lot of money to in free agency. And while, you know, I do like Hunter Henry, you have drafted him in previous seasons. He just never seems to stay healthy. And that is, is, is the case this year as he's already injured and he's already missing preseason games. And while John, who hasn't played in the preseason, had a minor ankle thing, I still think he'll be more healthy than Hunter Henry will be the long term. And like I said, the wide receivers on this team don't necessarily scare you. It's not like there's someone out there like a DeAndre Hopkins who's going to command a 30 30% target share. There really isn't out there. John o. Smith could see a lot of targets, and Cam Newton has always loved targeting the tight end. Just look back to his days with Greg Olson. I do think John o. Smith, athletic, and he's very athletic. If you haven't watched him, very sneakily athletic, and will get down the field and catch and run, run the y yards after catch. That's his specialty, and I think they'll get the ball in his hands and let him do things. Now, moving on to another team, Miami Dolphins, and you know why I'm here. I'm here to top up Miles Gaskin. Now, I made a, couple, a video a couple weeks ago. I said it was about the top, like, I believe I did three top, three running backs outside the top, like, tier of guys that you guys should draft in your fantasy football leagues. Miles Gaskin was one of them. Currently, he was going at Right, running back 21, pick 60. Well, now he's plummeted. Running back 26, pick 83. A whole two to three rounds later, the Gaskin was a stud in 2020. He even gave you a blind resume. He had identical statistics to Austin Eckler, who's going as a top 10 running back in the NFL in, in fantasy football drafts. Now, I understand why he slid. People saw Malcolm Brown go in there. And in the first preseason game for the Dolphins, Malcolm Brown was running with the ones and Miles Gaskin was running with the twos. And people were like, Oh no, not the Miles Gaskin show. I had Cam Akers last year. I had Darrell Henderson. No, I'm not, I'm not watching My, Malcolm Brown steal all these touches. Well, Malcolm Brown made the most of that first, first game. He went nine carries, eight yards, and the Dolphins said, heck no, I'm done seeing this. And they showed that in the second preseason game. Tua had a great game, and Miles Gaskin turned it up in the second preseason game. Six carries, 27 yards, and a rushing touchdown. Another four receptions, 44 receiving yards, and another touchdown just in one half of play. He's a running, he's a legit running back, too. This guy should not be running back 26. I guarantee you he starts to move up after that performance. And either way, I'm in on Gaskin. If you want to keep him at running back 26, by all means, I'll take the I'll take the discount on a guy that will be a certified RB2 for the whole year. Now, you have, I mean, you got seven rounds basically before him. He's going pick 83. This guy, completely undervalued, and he should be higher in fantasy football leagues. He will not be outside the top 25 running backs. I can guarantee you that. And even the top 20 is a little disrespectful. I do think Miles Gaskin is in for a big workload on a, on a team that's much that will have a much better... I don't think Tua will be as bad as he was last year, essentially. They'll be a better offense, and their defense is still pretty good. Moving on to the Buffalo Bills, the team that will likely win this division unless something happens. Now, obviously, Josh Allen, top one, two, three, tight end, or not tight end, fantasy football quarterback. Got Stephon Diggs, arguably top three fantasy football wide receiver. And then you got Zach Moss and Devin Singletary, who I've talked about in previous videos, not very high on either of them. And they're a committee on a team that doesn't run the ball. The team that whose best running back is their, wide, is their quarterback. So I'm going to choose in this. We won't talk about this guy for a long time. We're going to choose their wide receiver or rapper or whatever you want to call him. Cole Beasley, currently being drafted as wide receiver 50, ADP pick 127, right around, you know, where the Corey Davises of the world were going, right around there. You mean wide receiver 50 is not, not necessarily singing praise to him. Now, if you look at it, Cole's been in the headlines all off seasons for, for questions that we won't necessarily get into this video, but Cole Beasley last year, 20, he was wide receiver 27 in PPR leagues, 82 receptions, and nearly 1,000 yards, just finished 33 yards shy of 1,000. Now, John Brown is gone. Emmanuel Sanders will be replacing that role as kind of a deep threat, intermediate kind of guy, as well as UCF alumni, UCF stand up. Gabe Davis, who I do know that the Bills are high on, but he doesn't necessarily factor into what Cole Beasley does because Cole Beasley is a slot receiver. Now you look at it, I just don't see Cole Beasley finishing outside of the top top 50 of receivers, which is where he's being drafted. Wide receiver 50. All I have to do is finish in the top 50, and this would be a good pick. Now, I do think this guy not necessarily going to win you your fantasy football league, and if you're looking for a high upside guy here, then I'd probably pivot to, like, the Devontae Smiths of the world, Henry Ruggs, maybe Marquise Hollywood Brown. Those guys might maybe win you your league if they have an absolutely absurd season, but sometimes you're not looking for someone here. Someone here, you're looking for a bi-week fill-in, and Cole Beasley will be that. Last year, he had six straight he had six straight weeks, just as I believe weeks two through like seven or eight, that he had double-digit fantasy points. Nine of his 15 games that he played in double-digit fantasy points. He was very good, and he was, like I said, wide receiver 27. I think he'll be a top 40 wide receiver when it's all said and done. 
I mean, this Buffalo Bills team does not run the ball. Come on. If you watch the Buffalo Bills the past one, two years, they are not running the ball. They have no interest. And I think that will be the same with Josh Allen. Let him scramble, make some plays. And they're going to be doing that all day long. Now, that'll do it for the AFC video. Let me know what you guys like, maybe from these teams. Maybe I'm sleeping on someone on your favorite team. If you're a Jets, Pan or J Jets Patri Patriots, Bills, or Dolphins fan, stand up. Just let me know in the chat down below in the comments. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. It's been Austin. I'll catch you guys in the video tomorrow. Who knows what it's going to be, but we'll have a video uploaded tomorrow morning. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys then. Peace out.